Hey there folks, back at you with another video. Uh, we're back at the uh, Ford 6.0 Delete. And uh, this series here, uh, we're buttoning things up. We got a couple small things left on the wiring. Uh, we got to put the front clip back on it. We got to get it to start. We got to get it to shift. Uh, all those things. So uh, that's what this is going to be about. Uh, I, I promise you it will be some interesting stuff once again and uh, some pointers that you got to keep in mind. So yeah, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Don't cost nothing. Let's get past the intro. Let's get into this. All right, well, first things first, um, I got into a dilemma. I couldn't get the, um, the uh, vacuum pump to work. And uh, this is one of those things where um, you gotta watch out. The plug, and what happened was this, the plug for the uh, pressure switch on the AC uh, dryer here, and the plug on uh, for the vacuum pump, they are identical. They just pinned a little different and I had them swapped around. So this one, I had it over there, and then this one here, the brown one, I had it hooked up to the um, uh, vacuum pump, and that's why it wouldn't work. So um, they look, you know, they both fit, they're identical uh, in any which way, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> they're just pinned out a little different, and uh, yeah. So make sure you, you don't confuse those. So the orange one for the vacuum pump, brown one for the uh, for the AC dryer. So um, on the, okay, uh, we'll be right back. All right, next is shift uh, the shift cable. So as you can tell, they look identical. And so uh, there's no difference there. Yeah, well the six o is a smidge, let me see here, um, 60 is a smidge different. And the biggest difference here, I mean you can tell right here, all this, this right here, this is where it hooks up to your shifter in the in the cab, and then all this is the same, well it's a little different right there, but that's just a rubber grommet. grommet. The biggest difference is right here. So your 601 is right here. That's your 601. It uh, it won't work on your transmission because it's too long, and you can't get it onto the onto the shift lever of the transmission. So when uh, you got to use the 731, because like I said, it is you know at least a good half inch shorter, and. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is the difference. I could not get this one to come on. I guarantee you this one will come on. So, or I can get that on that shift arm that's on the transmission. So, uh, keep that in mind. So, make sure you use the 73 shift cable. So, all right, we're going to get that installed and we'll be right back. All right, well, we got the shift cable uh, installed. Uh, that's all working great now. Um, now we're back now we're down to uh, just the last couple of things the only thing I still got to work on is the radio uh, the speakers don't work and then um, I just got uh, done testing the door locks and before I get that all put up and uh, and stuff um, I just wanted to show you real quick how I did that customer said that he did not want to do a whole cap wiring and all that he wasn't worried about that he says just just wire the necessities in, and he says, I'm going to be happy. Uh, so we got the seats, the power seats done, dome light, windows, uh, you know, whatever else uh, you may have. Um, like I said, the only thing I still have to do is the radio for the speakers, and uh, I got the door locks. I wanted to make the door locks function with key off. Um, so that was, you know, because that way if you leave the truck, when you shut the truck off, uh, you can lock the door. You come out of the store uh, and you walk up to your truck, you can unlock the door without the truck having to be running. So this one I got, this one I did, um, this one it is right here. Just a standard uh, five prong um, relay setup. 
and I just roughnecked it in so that way I could test it first, make sure it's uh, make sure it works, and it does. I'll show you here real quick if uh, if anybody ever runs into something like this uh, this is how I did that so here you got the paper so 37 or 30 is red uh, and that is the wire one of those goes to lock and one of those goes to the unlock and I found the wires here in the cab for that and you got two signal wires that come off the the switch there on the door um, those are your trigger wires, uh, those are ground, uh, that's pin 85, so tr trigger wires are ground based, um, 87A, which is my yellow right here, um, that is ground, and then um, the positive uh, power coming in is uh, 87 and 86. Uh, those are both 12 volts. I'll give you a good shot. So if you want to put it on pause and you want to do some wiring, there you go. And those are right here. And for test purposes, I just put an inline fuse in it real quick. That way I know for sure I would burn nothing up. And I just ran my wire. These, uh, these jumper wires, basically, uh, straight to the battery. Just to have a, you know, like I said, we're just for testing purposes. And then... Uh, So there's your there's your uh, door lock setup. Um, like I said, now this was just roughnecking it in. I just wanted to test test it real quick, so I know I got my wires right, and it was going to function, which it does. So now just going to you know plumb it in, um, you know with uh, solder, heat shrink, um, all that good jazz. So and then we'll tuck it up into the into the dash there, so it's up and out of the way. We'll probably do something right there or something or another. So, well, yeah, <clears throat> door locks function now, which I thought was a big one. So I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to get that wired in and plumbed in and tucked away and put up. And then uh, we'll be back for the next step. All right. Um, I had to pull the dash out again. I could not get the instrument cluster to work. And it was, it was just shit uh all there's to it couldn't figure it out everything test tested out through the gem module and all that i just couldn't figure it out so um so what i did is i pulled the dash out and uh pulled the wiring harness out and this wiring harness came out of the donor truck so that's out now and we bought another one and that is back in it and i've got everything basically to work um We've got, uh, we got the HVAC working. So that's in your face. That's for your feet. You hear it switching over? Vacuum pump works, got the radio to work. Um, here we go. I got just that side to work, that speaker to work right now. Um, I still gotta figure out, well I got that basically all nailed down. I just gotta see what's going on uh, on that wiring right there for that speaker. And I'll show you here real quick. So for on your 7.3 wiring harness, your speakers are in this gray plug that sits in the middle of your dash. Uh, that's for your driver's side right there, these four front and rear. And on the passenger side, uh, these two are your speaker wires or speakers. 
Um, well, and this one was a regular cab, so it didn't have speakers in the rear. Uh, so it's only two. And what I did is I went to the, the 6 hole wiring harness, cut the plug off, depinned everything I didn't need, and then pulled the pins out and pushed them right into, into this one. And that is your um, 04 plug, basically. So you got all these wires here, and these four are for your speakers front and rear. Um, so I've got that done. That's all figured out. Um, so these are your wires for your passenger side speakers. And then underneath the dash there, close to the brake pedal, uh, that's for your driver's side on that gray plug. So, and, and, let's not forget, she runs and drives. See how my gauges are working? Uh, oil pressure. Uh, battery, fuel, uh, throttle. And we're driving. So basically got that all figured out. The only thing now that is not working are the headlights. And I've got that all narrowed down to, um, I'll show you for uh, ease on this wiring harness. I've got that narrowed down to this one here. Um, this pin here is for your headlights. So what I did, I uh, looked at the wiring diagram and then, um, let me see here where you at oh right here um, at your you know uh, turn signal switch that's where your headlights go through and I have power there and now the only thing left to do so what I did here is did an ohm test on it so stuck it in there and then grabbed my other lead and found it was this wire right here so now we're going to take the plug off right there, the black one, and um, see why the headlights are not working. Market, market lights working, uh, brights are working, it's just the headlights that are not working. Here, I'll show you real quick. <clears throat> so, I mean, look, so, but just no headlights. But, the brights do work though. See, the reflection on the toolbox. So that works, it's, <laughs> it's just the, the regular headlights are not working. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that off and then uh, see what's what. If need be, we'll just run a wire uh, to bypass it. But. We basically got everything to work uh, except for uh, headlights right now and the driver's side speakers are not working yet and uh, I still need to get an air filter but we're getting really really close to go for a test drive and see how she does I can't wait so hang in there we're buttoning a couple things up and now we're going to take it for a spin so here we go all right we got everything put back together. She's done. That's a chip to go with it. Uh, horn, dome light. So uh, the only thing I'm waiting for yet is uh, a gauge for the boost for the turbo. I'm gonna mount that here. Gives it a nice clean spot. So waiting on that to show up. This should come here tomorrow. So, but um, I drove it outside drove it back inside I heard some grinding noise and while I was putting this together um, you know I had the the 
if you mount it in the original engine uh, spot where the engine mount goes in the cross member and whatnot, if that's where you mount it, um, the transmission goes back about an inch, not quite. But uh, anyway, so when I put the drive shaft back on there, that was making a grinding noise because there was just too much compression on the whole shaft. It fit, but it was not nice. And like I said, I drove it out the shop and drove it back in, and it was grinding. Uh, you know, not bad, but there was grinding. So, or uh, and then I, you know, you know, I already knew what was what. So anyway, so I had to shorten the drive shaft up. Uh, right at the carrying bearing because that was shoved all the way up into here so there's the carrying bearing and uh, this is the chunk I uh, I cut out so we cut an inch out and then I welded it all back together so that's all ready to go and while I took it out come to find out that um, the yoke was off one setting one tooth and it ruined the uh the u-joint so i put a new u-joint on it as you can tell so that's all brand spanking new ready to go so now we're getting ready to drop the uh put the drive shaft back onto that truck and then we're going to take it for a test drive so here we go by the way um if you want to see a video on shorting up uh, shortening up drive shafts I made one a long time ago. I'll put a link uh, in the uh, description for that for that on this video. They can check that out. Uh, it's really easy. Uh, people always say, "Oh, you got to balance the shaft and stuff like that." If you use the original tubing and everything that's original, and you just shorten it up, I wouldn't worry about it too much. So, done it plenty of times and uh, never really had any issues with it. No vibrations, none whatsoever. So. Um, like I said, if you want to check that video out, it's in the in the, in the description underneath here. And then uh, I'll put a card at the end for that video as well. So anyway, yeah, so let's put this drive shaft back together. All right, uh, took it for a test drive yesterday with the customer. Man, it, this thing just runs silky smooth. Uh, we're just buttoning a couple things up. Uh, got to charge the AC up um, I still need to run that cover over there that's coming in uh, in a couple days and then um, we're still gonna run a uh, boost gauge I've got the holder in place already uh, customer likes to have it right there and then you say well what's going on right there well so I took it for a test run and uh, the cab lights weren't working so check the wiring uh got to go into that corner uh got power and for whatever reason it didn't have a ground so it took it apart right here right there and um i put this you know put this on there run a little wire and ground it right there on that bolt and then the cap light's starting to work and now i took it apart but since I've been fiddling with that plug over there in that corner, um, now the cap lights work. So sometimes you just got to fiddle with it, unplug it, plug it back in, and then <laughs> for whatever reason it starts working. So uh, when, when you start putting stuff like this together, just keep that in mind. And I got the handle out because that wire for the cab lights and the message center that goes right here uh, runs through uh, right there to that cab through that cab right there and then down below right there that's where the plug is so um, if you have a wonder but yeah uh, I did have power I just didn't have ground Okay boys, let's go uh, for a test drive. Oh. 
All right, let's roll the windows up. Let's turn the AC on. Oh yeah, that's nice and cool. Here we go. Gauge works pretty good. Shift's good. Tell you what, you run silky smooth, guys. It's unbelievable. It really is. AC is nice and cold. Turn signal works. Runs like a champ. The months of hard work have paid off. Customer is super excited. He, uh, he's getting ready to pick the come pick this truck up. So I'll uh, I'll mount the. Um, camera on top of the truck so y'all can see that I'll do that here in a minute <clears throat> but as you can tell she uh, she runs really good
right guys there you have it <clears throat> she's all done done the last test drive and uh, she does amazing everything works as it's supposed to headlights uh, windows door locks AC heat everything works so this string uh, this truck is ready to go so yeah all right that's it for this series here Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Don't cost nothing. And uh, I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Peace out.